right, everyone. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, for coming for another episode of Beachcast. Today we're going to be um, today we're going to be dealing with uh, Zend Expressive. We're going to uh, create a module. Now we're going to be working with the project that I created over the last two episodes. So in one episode we actually uh, did an installation of Zend Expressive, uh, and then uh, using Composer and uh, getting all that set up. And in another episode, we then used that installation and uh, and got some more things up and running uh, with Docker. So we were able to use Docker to get the Docker environment up and running. We uh, used PHP Storm to get uh, PHP Unit working uh, through PHP Storm. Also MySQL uh, and connecting to the database through PHP Storm. And also used PHP Storm to set up all the, the Docker, everything we needed for that. So that way we could manage all that from right within PHP Storm. Now, this episode is going to be about using that installation. And we're going to first use the, the CLI that comes with Zend Expressive Skeleton application. It's called uh, Expressive Tooling. So we're going to use Expressive Tooling to then um, install some, uh, an additional module. Also, we will install a handler within that module. And then we'll set up some routing uh, using FastRoute, which we also chose to install uh, through the Zen Skeleton application installer. So uh, without any more delay, let me go ahead and get started on that. I'm going to share my screen here. And uh, let's see. Okay, so we'll go there. Uh, one, one thing I also ask is that you please, uh, if you like the videos, uh, please go ahead and subscribe down below. I really appreciate it if you subscribe. And not only that, it'll also let you know when I'm getting ready to uh, launch anything. So that way uh, you'll be able to keep up with the latest episodes and the latest things that I have going on. So that being said, uh, on my screen now we see PHP Storm. It's the environment that I set up over the last couple episodes. And we have the code here. Now, one of the things we can use is we can uh, then open up the terminal. So uh, open up the terminal that's inside of it. Of course, we could uh, do, do present working directory. We can see that we are actually in the project that we set up. Um, and with the Zen Skeleton application, we also have the uh, CLI tools. So the CLI tools are there, easy to use. We can use them one of two ways. Either we could do uh, use PHP. We could use PHP and tell it that inside the vendor directory, uh, inside the vendor directory in the bin, we want to use the expressive uh, command line tool. And so if I if I use this just as I typed it, PHP vendor bin expressive, we uh, oop, I didn't get uh, what I was expecting to get. Got an error instead. Uh, what caused that? Actually, it did come up. Oh, I see. It was uh, I was playing with this a little bit ago, and now it's expecting uh, the uh, uh, an item to be there. So let me go ahead and remove that because we're going to recreate that this time. All right, now if I redo that command, now we'll get expressive working. So expressive gives you uh, a list of application or a list of uh, commands that can be executed. Uh, there are some different options that can be uh, executed, such as help, quiet, version. Um, we can choose ANSI, no ANSI. We can choose the verbosity of the output. Um, and then there are certain commands in there, such as help, list. Um, which lists the commands, which is basically what we're looking at here. The default is that it lists the commands that are that are available to us. Um, we can also uh, create an action, uh, create a factory. We can create handlers or create middleware. And we can also use um, the interop, uh, interrupt middleware. We can migrate an interrupt middleware. Uh, and then for the module, we can also do create, deregister, and register the module. Now, when you create a module, it registers it for you automatically. And I'll show you what that means here as we get as we get going through. Um, now, another way that we can use ex the expressive CLI tooling is instead of calling PHP, we can simply call Composer and uh, call it a Composer Expressive, just like that. 
and it would basically give us exactly the same thing. Now, why does it do that, you might ask? The reason is, is because if you recall in the composer.json toward the bottom, there was a list of scripts, right? And these list of scripts are commands that Composer can uh, make available to us. And we can see here that one of those commands is expressive. And basically what it does when you type Composer expressive is it passes the command expressive uh, and using ANSI. So uh, there are other things in here. We can uh, tell development uh, enable, development development disable, and development status to kind of give us the, the, the current uh, settings that are available inside of our expressive skeleton application. Now, we already know that development it's set for development mode because that was uh, what we had tested earlier uh, when we did the installation. Uh, so, and of course, now that now we're able to do Composer Expressive, and uh, and we can verify that those commands are in fact also working. So now that we've got that working. Uh, we want to create a module. Now in Zend Expressive Skeleton application, inside the source directory, you can see we have one module by default, which is app, A-P-P. And inside there, we have another source directory. We have handlers that are available inside the app. Now, I like, I like creating modules to kind of separate the logic of my application so that I have uh, that separated up into modules. So if I wanted to take away a module or if I wanted to add another module, it's, it's literally adding and, and or uh, taking away logic from the application. Um, and I like having it all compartmentalized like that. So, so I really like using modules. So in this case, I'm going to create a module and uh, the module I want to create, the first one I'll create is, is uh, announcements, because in, uh, in this application, I want to create a, uh, some functionality around announcements and being able to make announcements to our users, right? So, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to issue the command composer expressive, right? And then I want to do module create, and I'm going to create announcements. So again, we have composer, expressive, module create, and announcements. That's the module that I want to create. So now I'm going to go ahead and click enter here, and expressive will create that module. And it tells me in the output that it created the module, and it created it inside the source directory, much like the app. Now in, uh, in PHP Storm, if I click up in the project uh, window, you'll see that now I, it updates, and I have an announcements folder available there. Now, when we issued that command just now, we created a module, it did a couple different things. One of the things it did is it added into my config, it added the module, and it ad ad added it as uh, the configuration. Uh, with, with Zen Skeleton application, or the Zen Expressive Skeleton application, it's very configuration driven, right? So in what it does is it adds this one line into the configuration telling it the namespace of where to find a config provider. So it created that line in my configuration. Um, now, another thing that it did is in my composer JSON, it also added announcements into my auto loads, right? So it added that into the auto loads and it already updated composer. So now it knows where to find the announcements module uh, through PSR4 namespaces. So that's two things that it did. The other thing that it did, of course, which we already saw, is it created this announcements folder inside the, the, the source directory. If we expand that, we see that there's a templates folder and another source directory. Inside that source directory, we have the config provider. Now again, Zend Expressive is, is very configuration driven. You can customize it to be whatever you want. All you have to do is update the configuration and let Expressive know what you want. So, uh, so let's take a look at the config provider. Uh, in the config provider, uh, it, it's very clean right now because of course we haven't done much for configuration. It's just the skeleton for it. Uh, and you'll notice that, uh, that we have the namespace announcements. We also have uh, the class config provider. Uh, in the invoke method, we are creating dependencies and templates. We're returning that into the configs. All of the configs in Zend Expressive are aggregated together. So what this is doing is it's adding dependencies and templates to the aggregated configuration. 
And, and in this case, all it's doing is calling to separate methods, get dependencies, and get templates. Now, since this, since this application is going to be an API, a REST API, it's going to be returning JSON, we don't really need templates. So I'm going to ignore that. We're just going to pretend it's not even there. But the get dependencies is going to be important because we are going to have dependencies for the module. Um, so we, we will want to specify those. Now, initially, right out of the gate, uh, as we created this module, uh, it's, it's functional at the moment. So we're able to then, uh, we're able to go in and then and use it. However, you'll notice that there it really isn't any code here, right? There's no code, there's no handlers. We want to create handlers. Um, and to, so that this will be in line with, uh, with middleware using uh, the PSR 15 middleware pattern from the PSRs. So what I'm going to do is in, go back to my terminal and I'm going to use Zend Expressive now, the Zend Expressive tooling to create, uh, create some middleware for me inside this module. Uh, and we're gonna do that by adding a handler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type composer uh, expressive, right? And we want to create a handler, handler create, and we want to follow the namespaces for this. So we're gonna do announcements, announcements, oops, I misspelled that, announcements. And using namespaces, I'm gonna type in handler, so that's the sub, the sub uh, place in the, uh, in the namespace. And you know, you'll notice I'm using double slashes here. And uh, the reason that is is because one slash is acting as an escape so it's escaping the next slash. So that way, uh, as, Zen, as this gets parsed out, it's going to get a legitimate namespace. If I only put a single slash here, it would just concatenate all these words into one long string. It wouldn't actually have the slashes to identify as a namespace. So uh, we wanna do announcements, uh, read handler. Let's go ahead and create a read handler first. And that's what we're going to create. So now if I hit enter here, expressive is it's gonna create the handler uh, and it's gonna give me some feedback telling me where it created that handler. Now, if I click up here in my code view, we'll notice that expressive tooling created a subdirectory under announcements source uh, for handlers. Inside handler then we can see that it also created two files a, an announcements read handler factory and announcements read handler. Now it does that for a couple different reasons. One is of course, having a handler, it allows you to, to put some things into the handler that the, the, it, the factory allows you to put things into the handler that it may need. So that way uh, you're able to inject them uh, into the handler versus doing some instantiation within your handler. You use your factory for that. So, uh, so let's uh, take a look at these, uh, look at what was created here, because not only did it create these handlers, but there's other things. Um, actually, we'll get to those in a minute though, because I, I, one of the things that it did not create yet is our routes, so we're not able to actually do any testing yet. But let's take a let's take a look at the uh, at the factory first. So, if we look at the factory, we can see that it's just a class, right? It's just a class. Uh, announcements read handler factory and inside there there's an invoke method so it's invocable and basically it is returning the handler so it's instantiating the handler and returning that from the factory right so uh, <clears throat> and you can see here that we are using the container interface the containers being injected into this through uh, the ex expressive skeleton application and we're returning a read handler, uh, which is of course what's going to be instantiating. So let's take a look at the read handler. Inside the read handler, we have some use statements that are using some some of the PSRs from the PSR uh, HTTP uh, PSR 15 uh, middle the middleware PSR, uh, and in here we have the handler, which is implementing the request handler interface. Uh, we're passing into it the request itself, and we're going to be getting a response interface back. Um, now, I do need some more information in here because right now this handler is not going to actually return anything, and we'll just get an error. So let's put some let's put some uh, some code in here that will actually give us something to return. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a generic response. 
Um, first, I'm going to create a. Uh, I'm going to create an array. We have the results array, and in there we're going to pat, uh, bring out embed, and then we're going to output more of an array. So this is just creating an array. Uh, now we're going to return the JSON response. Uh, the JSON response. Uh, it actually implements the request handler interface and we're passing the array into it. So then by default, the JSON response is going to then parse this and, uh, and do an encode, JSON encode, so that way it gives us JSON output and that's what it's going to be returning. Very simple, nothing too extreme there. Um, now again, I have this in there, right? But one thing that I don't have is... Um, one thing that I don't have is a route. So if I were to go into the, the HTTP requests, uh, if I was to go to the HTTP clients or the REST clients within PHP Storm, and I use the get method and I put in my URL, oh, one thing I did forget to do is Docker. I gotta get, get Docker up and running. So let's use the Docker that we installed previously. Uh, I'm gonna select the configuration for, for Compose Deployment. Uh, and I'm going to kick that off. So now Docker in the bottom left, you can see Docker actually bringing up the containers, starting them. Now they're up and running. Now we actually have a web a website. Uh, so I'm, again, in the REST client, if I do a git call to that URL to slash announcements, and we can see what we get back, which, you know what, it can't get it. And the reason is because there's no routes. So the application right now doesn't know how to find that. So let's go ahead and add some routes. And how we do that is in the config, we go to the routes file, and we see that there are some routes there. By default, the Zen Skeleton application installs a slash and also a slash API slash ping uh, by default, just as samples, right? But what we need to do is we need to add in a route for our new handler that we just created. So let me go ahead and, and do that. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a get. So these in the app, I'm passing the get, which is using HTTP get, right? Uh, I can put any other uh, HTTP method I want to in there. If I wanted to do a post or, uh, or a put or a delete, something like that, this is where that would be specified, um, is, is in that command to the app. Now, in this case, I'm just doing a get and I'm saying, if a request comes in for slash announcements, um, and then of course I'm making the tailing slash, in case somebody makes a, a request to slash announcements slash, I made that conditional, right? If it exists, just ignore it and go ahead and consider this a route. However, if there is no slash on the end, it will still resolve. Uh, again, that, that, uh, the square brackets with the slash on the end, that just says make it conditional. Uh, if it's there, use it. If it's not there, don't use it. Um, so once that request comes in and fast route behind the scenes uh, find, sees this route being passed in, it's going to call this middleware. It's going to go to announcements handler and announcements read handler, right? So once it, uh, once it goes to there, initiates that class, then, uh, and there's also a short name here. Now, now that I've got the route here, Save that. If I go over to my uh, REST client and try this again, uh, what did I forget? No file found. Uh, we got a no file found, so I forgot to do something. Uh, oh, it's not finding it because, it's not finding it because I don't have the, the JSON response. Uh, put in here. So, uh, so I'm going to use the JSON response from Deactoros. Deactoros. Now I went ahead and typed it. I cheated a little bit because I used PHP Storm's autocomplete. And by typing that in and selecting, what it did is it actually added line 10 here which adds Zen Deactoros response, JSON response. Um, it didn't know where to find that before because uh, I, I copied and pasted it in versus typed it. Otherwise it would have done this autocomplete form pr previous to that. So now that I've got JSON response in there and it knows where to find it, now we can uh, do the request again and we see that we did get the response. We did get um, a, a JSON response. It turned the array that we created here 
uh, into JSON and return that for us. So now we now we got that response. Now, one thing you might notice here is when we created that route, we actually called straight through to the announcements request or read handler. It didn't call the factory, right? So if we had relied on the factory for something in this case, the factory wasn't even being called. So one of the things we do need is in our um, because I like doing my configuration specific to the modules, right? I like keeping the modules, everything within the modules. Uh, one thing that I did not do is in my Git dependencies, I didn't create the factories here, right? So I, I want to create those factories. So what I'm going to go, what I'm going to do is in my... Uh, in my factories, I want to, to create an entry that will that will do this. Now we'll have our 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 handler announcements request handler, and that will be mapped. So whenever we make a request to this announcements request handler, it will then call through to the factory, right? Uh, because we're setting it in here as a factory. And so now, in this case, because it's being added to the config, if we go back to the REST client now and we replay this, we're going to get it back to the exact same thing, right? It didn't realize that there was a difference because we called straight through to the request handler. However, if I needed the factory, uh, maybe I wanted to insert a database connection or something like that and then inject that into my, into my handler through my factory. Uh, had I relied on that, it would not have worked before. But now that we've added it, it's there. Because in future, in, in future videos, I'm going to be actually be using the factory. We're going to create a database connection. We're going to do a lot of other things with our factory that we would not have been able to do uh, if I did not add in that entry into the config provider, right? So now that we've got that inside the config provider, uh, where my factory is, is, you know, being mapped through by calling the handler. So that way it always calls the factory. Now, now we're all set to go there. Uh, and we've got our routes, right? We've got the route in there for the read. Now I could create a lot of other routes in here. And maybe I, you know, in the case of the, our sample application, we're going to be adding other routes in here for post, you know, for delete, um, and some other things, uh, put, uh, and we're going to be adding those in here, but one of the things that I want to do is uh, what, what we've done here is we've created this route inside my routes.php inside the main configuration. Now, if I were to take away that uh, announcements module, right, because we created the announcements module, if I were to take away the announcements module, it's possible that I could have some routes left behind if I don't go back and clean out the routes, right? So I really like to keep my routes specific to the to the module as well. And how I do that is using a, a thing in Zend Expressive. Um, we, there's a thing called delegators, right? So I want to use a delegator that handles my routes um, within within the module. So I'm going to create a routes delegator. Uh, and how I'm going to do that, let me, uh, on my other screen, I've got uh, too much open. So how I want to do that, I want to create a routes delegator. So inside the source directory here, uh, on the same level as the config provider, I'm going to create a new file, a new PHP file, and I'm going to call that routes delegator. Oh, if I can type routes delegator, uh, I don't have to add the extension. It's automatically going to do it. So I'm going to create routes delegator PHP, and it puts it on the same level as my config within, within my module. Now in the routes delegator, basically what we want to do is we want to have content like this. So we have the namespace because the routes delegator exists in that module, right? So the namespace is important. Um, we're going to use announcements handlers, uh, things inside the announcement handlers. Um, and then we're going to create the routes delegator class. Uh, in there, we have an invoke method. The invoke method is expecting the container to be passed into it. It's expecting the service, a service name. So that way we know the name of the service to be, to be called. And of course we have a callback, right? 
Um, and then we can also see in here that I do have that same get that I had before, the same route that I had before. Um, so, uh, and that's there. Now, this routes delegator at the moment, it's not even being called. We just created the class. It exists, it's there for us to use, but we're not, we're not using it yet. We have to do one more thing. What we have to do is in our config provider, I need to create a new item in the, in the configuration array. And that is the item for delegators. So, what that looks like is this. So we have a new key for delegators. Uh, we're, we're calling the Zend Expressive application, and we're also calling the routes delegator. And, uh, and by calling the routes delegator, now one thing we do have to do, I just realized, is I have to actually tell it where to find that. And routes delegator. Actually, it's good because it's in the same directory, that's why. So it, so it worked out fine. So anyway, we have the routes delegator there. Um, now that I've got that inside my config, in the config provider, the routes delegator is actually going to be loaded. So I could go back here to my routes now, comment out that route because we don't need it in the routes anymore, right? We now have it in a routes delegator that is going to be specific to the module and I can create any routes in here I want to specific to that module. The nice thing is, is if I take the module away, those routes go away with it. So then the application wouldn't have any errors related to, you know, uh, routes that aren't being able to be satisfied anymore. So, uh, so let's take a look at this. If I go back to my REST client and we, we play that, we see that I in fact do get the same response because the routes delegator worked. Um, so now I can go back to my routes and finish cleaning that out. Uh, I don't need that route there anymore because the route delegator, routes delegator is going to handle it. That's really all there is to the routes delegator. It's just a matter of, of activating it in the config under, under the delegator's key, telling it you know, what delegator to load. And, uh, and in, uh, in the routes delegator class, you can create routes. So that way uh, the application knows, knows how to, how to solve that and uh, and it works so that is all i have for this episode so what we've done is we've uh we've added a module for zend expressive inside that module we added the handlers so that way we're able to do the announcements read and we're able to get that back and we also added the routes delegator to handle the routes for that module um, now next time when, uh, next, next week, when I record the next episode, excuse me, we're going to be adding, uh, we're going to be adding doctrine. We're going to be adding doctrine ORM. We're going to be creating an entity and we're also going to be creating the database connections for, um, doctrine ORM to be able to pull data into the route, uh, into the module that we created. Um, and then we'll be able to uh, have that for, for future modules as we